Hello, I'm Fred Dynage. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. We're talking about crime and criminals and gangsters and killers, and we're talking for a while about the Cray twins, Ronnie and Reggie, who on the, the 8th of March 1969 had been found guilty of murder at the Old Bailey, Ronnie of killing George Cornell, a member of the rival Richardson gang in the east end of London, Richardson, of course, in the south of London, and Reggie, who'd killed a member of his own firm, Jack the Hat McVitie. So I told you last time how I met Reggie and how Reggie had said, if you want to write our story, you've got to meet Ronnie, my brother, my twin brother. If Ronnie likes you, you can do it. If Ronnie doesn't like you, you can't. Well, it took a long time to get to see Ronnie Cray because he was in the Broadmoor Hospital for the Criminally Insane at Crowthorne in Berkshire. The Broadmoor authorities were suspicious of me, I suspect, because of my media connections. I was working for ITV at the time, and it took a long time to get a visiting order, but finally one did come through, so I could go and meet Roddy Cray and Broadmoor. The day I went there, it was a beautiful January morning. The sun was shining. It was very, very cold, but it was a lovely day, a blue sky. I parked my car in the car park at Broadmoor, I was walking towards those big black gates that used to be at the entrance, which is a really old, horrible Victorian building. I was walking towards these gates when I became aware of the purring of a car engine next to me. I looked over my shoulder. It was a white Rolls Royce with a chauffeur on the front and blackened windows at the back. And one of the windows in the back dropped down and a puff of smoke came out. And a voice said, Fred Dynage. And I said, yes. He said, I'm a friend of Ronnie Cray. I believe you're going to write a book about him. I said, well, I'm going to talk to him and hope so. He said, well, I'm a friend of Ronnie Cray. Is this book going to be honest? I said, yes, it will be. Good, he said, because I'll be watching. The window went up and the car drove away. I later discovered... It was a guy called Joey Pyle who ran London's Underworld at the time and was a huge fan of the Cray Twins. And eventually, when the book was, their autobiography was eventually published, I got a phone call from Joey Pyle saying, I've read your book. It is on this. Well done. Just as well, really, wasn't it? Anyway, I got into Broadmoor through the big gates. I got frisked, checked for any weapons or anything I shouldn't have with me. But before I could meet Ronnie Cray, I was taken to the medical director's office. And he said to me, You'll find Ronnie Cray is a very pleasant man, but he is a chronic paranoid schizophrenic. He's on strong medication, which lasts for five or six days. Unfortunately for you, we're on day five. So you'll need to be very careful, Mr. Cray. And if you raise any subject which makes him unhappy or a little bit nervous or unnerved, his leg will start to shake. If his leg starts to shake, I advise you to change the subject very quickly. So, with that, I was taken into the visiting hall at Broadmoor. I walked past the Yorkshire ripper, Peter Sutcliffe, who was sat at a table, a formica table, with two girls stroking his hand, because apparently Sutcliffe, amazingly, had his own sort of fan club and different girls visiting him every month. I was taken to another formica table, sat down, and eventually a man came with a white coat, and he said, I'm Ronnie Cray's butler. I said, you what? He said, I'm Ronnie Cray's butler. I said, well, who are you? And he said, my name's Charlie Smith. I said, you're an inmate here? And he said, yes. I said, what have you done? He said, I stabbed two men to death. I said, why did you do that? He said, because they were, I felt they were talking about me and plotting to kill me. So I stabbed them to death. I said, oh. Anyway, he said, what do you want to drink? I said, well, could I have a coffee? He said, yes. He came back with a lovely silver tray, a silver coffee pot, beautiful bone china cup, and some biscuits and some sugar and some milk. That was for me, for Ronnie Cray, half a dozen cans of non-alcoholic lager and six packets of cigarettes because Ronnie Cray would light a cigarette have a puff and immediately put it out. I sat there and waited, and finally on the stone flagstones in Broadmoor I heard this marching sound. It was going to be Ronnie Cray. 
because they call him the Colonel because he marched everywhere. And in he came, sat down, shook my hand. He was absolutely immaculate, beautiful suit, shining shoes, tie, lovely gold rings on him, hair beautifully done. He looked absolutely superb. And eventually he said to me, so you want to write our story? I said, yes. He said, what are you going to put in it? I said, well, I'll put in it all the stories that have been in other books about the Cray twins, but I'll need to ask you about things which really haven't been in a lot of other books. What sort of things? Well, I'll need to ask you what happened to the Mad Axe Man, Frank Mitchell. You, you freed him from Dartmoor, and then he just disappeared. I mean, you were hoping to get parole from, from the government for him, but, but, but you couldn't, and then he disappeared. I'd need to ask you what happened to him. At which point Ronnie Cray's leg started to shake violently. And I found myself saying, what a beautiful day outside, Ronnie. Look at that beautiful blue sky. And he looked out and he said, yes. Yes, it's a lovely day, isn't it? I must get out in the garden later on, because he was a keen gardener. And so we moved on. And so I never, ever spoke about Frank Mitchell, the Mad Axeman, ever again. And we chatted away. And at the end of our conversation, he said, here, yeah, okay, you can write our story. It took me a long time. It took me about three years to write their story with them because the problem with the Cratoids was they would keep changing their minds about. I'd, for instance, one week they'd say, oh, Bill Jones, what a villain he was, what a bad man, you know, he really lets us down. And I'd write that down and take it back to show them next time. And they'd say, no, Fred, no, Bill Jones, no, he was a lovely bloke. No, you've got to change that. So it was a very, very difficult book to write. But eventually, after about three years, we got there. But there's a lot of problems along the way. And I'll be telling you all about that next time we talk. So join me again, if you can.